Hi all, it's Amita from Proficient's Amazon Connect team and I'm here today with another tutorial on building a basic inbound contact chat flow in Amazon Connect. So in mid-November, Amazon released their latest feature for Amazon Connect, which is a web and mobile chat. So what does it do? Well, it allows your customers to start a web or mobile chat with an agent or Amazon Lexbot, step away from it, and resume it up to 24 hours later. Let's look at some of the chat features. There's no need to switch between voice and chat user interfaces. You can use the same contact flows, queues, routing profiles, analytics, and configurations as you did for voice. The Amazon Lex chatbots that were built for voice are also supported within chat. Chats are secure and encrypted. If a chat that was initially handled by a chatbot needs to be handled by a human agent, Amazon Connect will take care of transferring the conversation history and any associated context, no coding required. Chat also supports asynchronous messaging. Chats can persist for up to 24 hours. And finally, following Amazon's pay-as-you-go model, you only pay per chat session. In this tutorial, we're going to walk through the basic steps of setting up an inbound Amazon Connect chat contact flow and then test it out in the Amazon Connect environment. So let's get started. So to begin with, you'll navigate to your Amazon Connect dashboard. The first thing we have to do is make sure the routing profile is set up. So I'm going to go to the routing profile page. We'll click on basic routing profile. And if I scroll down, you can see a line that says set channels and concurrency. And as you can see, I ticked voice and chat already. And I've said that the maximum number of chats per agent at one time is five. For information about how to configure agent routing profiles as they relate to chat, please read the tutorial that I linked in the description below on routing profiles. But once you've assigned the correct routing profile to an agent, you're ready to start building out your contact flow. So we can go back to the dashboard and actually just click on contact flows. And what you're gonna do is the same way you would build out a voice one, you'll just click on create contact flow. So I've gotten started with mine already. I've already given it a name and saved it in this tab over here. I'm calling it inbound chat. If you want to, you can add in blocks to enable logging and set the recording behavior. But for the sake of time, I'm going to skip that step and move forward to dragging in a play prompt box. And I'm doing this so that I can add a greeting. So the message that I'm going to write in this box is going to appear when a customer begins a chat on our website. So let's click text to speech, just like you would if you were filling out a voice greeting. And I'm going to type in, hi, dollar sign dot attributes dot name. Thank you for contacting proficient support please hold and we will connect you to the next available representative okay so this is my message and you'll notice that i put in dollar sign dot attributes dot name so i did that so that i could test out using a customer's name in the test console which you'll see in action in a minute in this tutorial later on. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. Uh, I will just connect my entry point to this. It's the same way you will build out a voice contact flow. You follow the same kind of steps. The next step is to drag in a set disconnect flow box. So I'm going to go down here. See where it says set disconnect flow. I'll drag that over. So the set disconnect flow box makes for a better customer experience. By having this box in your flow, it will let your customer know if an agent disconnects and tell them that if they still need assistance, they can continue the conversation with another agent by sending another message. So without having this box set up properly, the chat a customer was having, if an agent decides to leave without telling them, will just disappear, which isn't the greatest customer experience. So in order to actually use this box, I'm going to click on it and show you what it looks like. You'll see it's asking me to select a flow. So I'm going to have to build out a separate disconnect contact flow. So let's go ahead and do that. I've actually done it ahead of time, again, for the sake of time. You can see I've named it disconnect flow sample. I, I, the same way that you create an inbound contact flow, you follow the same steps. I'm just going to zoom in so you can see it's a little bit better. So you've got an entry point. 
I have a play prompt here, and my message says, our representative has disconnected. Please reply back within 24 hours if you need further assistance on this matter. So if an agent happens to disconnect from a chat they're having without letting the customer know, this message will pop up letting the customer know that they've had to disconnect. With If we don't have this, like I said, the customer won't know what happened, which isn't the greatest experience. I set the wait time to eight hours, but as I said at the beginning of this tutorial, chats can persist for up to 24 hours. So if you'd like the customer to be able to respond within 24 hours, you can do that here. And then you can see I've set the set working queue to basic queue. So if the customer returns, they're just gonna go back into the queue to speak with an agent via chat. They're transferred and then there's a disconnect. For a full explanation of how the disconnect flow works, please read the separate tutorial that I've also linked in the description below, right below the one about routing profiles. But this is ready to use, so we'll head back to our inbound chat, click on set disconnect flow. I'm going to choose the one that I just showed you. I'm going to save it, and then I'm going to connect these two together. I'm just going to drag that down. So the next step is to set the working queue, set the transfer to queue, and the disconnect blocks. So I am going to be using the basic queue. I'm going to just drag this up here. And I'm going to select basic queue, save that. And now in the same way that you transfer to queue, once it's been set for a voice flow, you do that. And then I've got a disconnect hangout box. So all of these things are going to be linked. My errors, I'm just going to link them to the disconnect boxes. Great. So this is it. This is a basic contact chat flow setup. I'm going to save that. I'm going to publish it. It says everything was saved successfully. It's published. So now what we can do is actually test this out in action. And in order to do that, I'm going to open a new browser and I've logged in already as an agent. So now I'm on my Amazon Connect dashboard as an agent and I've logged in. And in order to test the chat we just made, you see where it says explore your channels of communication. There's a box that says test chat, so I can click on that. So you should now be on this testing interface, and this is where you'll be able to play the role of agent and customer and see how your messages appear on either end. So this is where you would send a chat as a customer, and once I log in, I would be an agent on this side, and I can send messages back and forth and see how they work. So, But before we do that, we have to actually set up this test environment to receive the flow that we just built. So in the same way you link a phone number to a contact flow, you have to link a contact flow to this system over here so it knows what it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the inbound chat that we made. Now for contact attributes, you can leave this blank, but if you want to test using a customer's name, you can do that over here. Let's go ahead and try it just to see what the experience is like. It has to be in a JSON format. So I'm going to go uh, name and let's go with Amy. And then I'm just going to hit close bracket. Actually don't need a space there. And then for customer settings, you can also, oh, that just disappeared. Sorry about that. You can also put in a name there. And once you're happy with your settings here, you hit apply. And you can see that this test chat window has popped up as a customer. And it says Amy has joined the chat. So that's the name I put in. And the system message being sent says, hi, Amy. Thank you for contacting Proficient Support. Please hold, and we will connect you to the next available representative. So this is the same message I put in that play prompt box in my contact flow. Uh, you can see it's asynchronous messaging. I can send a message. And I don't need to be logged in as an agent. But what I'll do now is I will activate this login and you can see that I'm offline so I'm offline I can still send messages as a customer I need help and let's go ahead and change the agent status I'm going to change it to available and once I do you should see an incoming chat notification coming through so yeah 
chats. You can see incoming chat from Amy. The customer name is there. I'm going to go ahead and accept it. And now you can see all of the messages that were in the customer window are actually appearing here in my console. So I can see what's happening. Any messages that they've typed previously, I have that context right here. Uh, okay, so now that we have accepted the chat, we can type a message and reply to the customer. So all of the messages that I'm sending are appearing on the customer window as well. Another thing we want to highlight in the agent CCP are the two time clocks up here. So on the upper left hand side of the agent chat window, you'll see these two small clocks. The first one is the total time that an agent has been on the chat. And the time next to it with this little moon icon is the total time the agent has been idle. So this can help the agent navigate between multiple chat windows and manage their time more effectively. So let's test out if an agent disconnects from a chat. So I'm going to go ahead and end this without letting my customer know. So telling the customer that I left the chat over here, and then you can see the system message pops up that says our representative is disconnected. Please reply back within 24 hours if you need further assistance on this matter. So if you'll remember in the disconnect flow, this was the message that we put in and then we used it in the inbound chat flow. So if I hadn't set up that disconnect flow, this none of this would have appeared this whole chat window would have just disappeared which again is not great for a customer experience so if i want to continue the conversation i can do that i'm actually just going to clear this here i can't log in as a separate agent but i'm going to make myself offline and i'm going to say i still need help so i'm sending another message now let's go back to online available we should get another incoming chat i'm going to accept that one and as you can see, all of the information that was sent before is still all here. So if I was a different agent and I wanted to help this customer, I would have the full context of the conversation they were having with another agent. So with the release of chat, Amazon has added a powerful functionality that will help you better meet and serve your customers. This basic tutorial just grazes the surface of what you can do with chat, but stay tuned for more blog posts and tutorials about how you can use it in your Amazon Connect instance.